Welcome back. My name's Chris, and this week I've got another lesson for you on how to get better at learning songs. This will benefit you if you are a beginner, if you're self-taught, if you're wondering how pro-level musicians learn songs very quickly and e easily and efficiently. I think this can help you out and give you a framework to move up. And level five is a little bit of a paradox, so I hope you stick around as we work through how to learn songs better. Level one is all about acquiring the basic skills. I'm talking about the chords you need to play a song, finding a song at an appropriate level, everything, right? How to practice it, how to put it together, how to get familiar with it, and getting it into our muscle memory. Pick an appropriate song here, of course. Uh, a big mistake is picking a song that's way too hard, and it's gonna be impossible to actually have the patience to practice it at a beginner level. I'm gonna use the uh, tune Moon River as an example during this video. And this will accompany the uh, blog slash newsletter I do every week now. I will have it linked below. For every level, I've got the steps that I'm gonna demonstrate here that you can do with any tune. Okay, I wanna take Moon River. Oh, here's level one. I'll just demonstrate it as we go, all right. I need to know the chords, of course, so I can Google Moon River chords. I can watch a video. I can use my ear. There's lots of ways to learn a tune. Um, probably gonna be a combination of many things, maybe ear and a chord chart, right? Maybe a, a performance or a lesson. So we have to get all the chords in order. So I make sure, okay, I've got C, A minor. I wanna play it in C for now. F, C. So I kind of document what are the chords I need. I think there's probably nine or 10 chords in that tune. There's some weird ones, right? Like B minor seven flat five. And I have to kind of document these things and be aware of the, uh, how to contextualize this, right? And at first it's just me gonna, I'm gonna have to make a goal of learning all these shapes, right? That I need E seven. A minor, I can learn the most basic shape, of course, and you can always simplify. But we're trying to get these things in order and in time, right? So getting the idea of going two, three. And of course, I'm just playing the harmony. I can work four bars at a time. Level one of learning the basics and getting some vocabulary can be very haphazard because we often don't know how to learn. I didn't know how to learn. I had to figure it out. And I generally feel we're not taught that that well, and that's no one's fault. It's just been kind of a thing passed down now over the years of not being taught how to learn well, right? How to focus, how to really um, develop ourselves in a certain area. Be mindful of trying to play accurately so that we, we can increase our uh, muscle memory and give our body just one way of playing it, right? At the, in the A section, see, I'm gonna play through real quick, it's just easier. F, C, B minor, E7, A minor, G minor, C7, F, right? Knowing it well enough that my ear can at least help me get through the whole tune. Um, so that's just from familiarity of the tune, right? But I've also seen sheet music, I've played, I've played it enough, and I've kind of learned that tune as a side effect of learning other tunes, right? But you want to gather all the necessary things and then realize that it needs to be an appropriate amount hard not too hard, just just outside of your skill level. This is how we get into something. We have to get some, cut our teeth, right? I'm cutting my teeth right now with YouTube videos. I hope 50 videos from now, I'll be a lot better. Uh, but at first, you know, you have to start somewhere. So starting with simple songs is best. In the newsletter, I quote Bill Evans, who apparently said, I'd rather play one tune for 24 hours than 24 tunes in an hour. And I love that, right? So do less, make it more qualitative, and level one will be a breeze as you fall in love with music, right? As we play some tunes, hopefully play them well, and use a few songs to attain some level of proficiency that we can build upon in the future. Level two, it's all about feel. Bringing the emotion, bringing the warmth, bringing the human nature into this music. This goes for anything you do for strumming, for playing melodies, whatever it is. On Moon River, let me try to focus on feel now. Once I have the chords down from level one, this is a lot easier, of course. It's really hard to tell a student to really feel the beat better or to play with more dynamics if they're weak on their chords, right? Or weak on the harmony, weak on the content. So that's why this is level two, right? Once I have the chords down, I'm just gonna try to play it very slowly and work on the, my smoothness of switching. I might also be working on a certain technique. Maybe it's. It'd be 
finger picking. Right, whatever it is. I'm trying to get the qualitative nature of this to rise. Think about optimizing your overall feel, optimizing the like legato nature of the chords. It's not so much like learning different things, it's just taking what you know and playing musically. Big thing here is I think getting the feel down in time well. Really thinking about groove. If it's just something like this, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Really feeling comfortable in this space. Right, feeling comfortable in that, what we're creating here. We're trying to create a dynamic picture that's welcoming, not have it just be one note or feel like a product or like we're supposed to play it a certain way. We can bring a lot of personal feel to it. Not only feel at a musical level, but think about how you feel when you play it. Kenny Warner says this, playing like your musical heroes or playing like professional musicians, don't try to just wish that you could play like them or play what they play. Wish how that you could feel how they feel when they play because that's probably more doable. They're them. No, we can't play like them, we're us. We can play like us. We can steer the ship a little bit, but not much. We only have so much time and energy, so we need to kind of accept that. Then focus on the feeling of completeness, of acceptance of what you're, whatever you're playing. And this can be a great exercise. Going through some chords and really getting into this qualitative state of feeling better and feeling more confident. Like you're just listening, right? That's kind of what we're practicing feeling here. And it's really tough to do this, to kind of disattach from how it's going, right? Um, but it's something that you can practice. So now that we've practiced our feel on the instrument with level two, and we have some basics with level one, level three will be focusing on zooming out a little bit, thinking about music intuitions and how they interact with this tune. It might be like looking at the harmony at Moon River and thinking in numbers. And a good way to test that is playing another key. So let's say I play it instead of C, and um, let's try an A flat, okay? So I have to think, what's the chords? If I just went through the, just the harmony. Um, six, four, and one, two, one, and seven. Yeah, I think that's two, five, six, right? So I have to do this. This will really test my harmonic knowledge of this tune. And there's something you can do always in this regard when you're learning a song to try and uh, invest the time spent on that song being able for it to go into other things you're doing. It makes it kind of um, as currency, like that experience, right? When I learn a tune and I think about the numbers or I think about the, the feel, I'm not just like so just ultra focused on the exact chords and all that. I'm putting it in a context, right? Just like when I hear someone talk, there's a context of English in my case and a context of a certain cadence. If they're talking very hurriedly, it means something different, right? So there's context to all that and the same is true with music. And the more we see that, we can be adaptable and ready to go. Level three is all about deepening that over time. Level one through three kind of gave us the framework for this. In level three, you might be at for a while, but level four kind of represents the typical professional place you wanna to try to play from. If you have enough experience again and familiarity, you start to be able to be consistent. You can play a tune under pressure. You can play it for a performance or for recording. In the case of Moon River, I would say that if someone could play it very calmly, very collected, even under pressure, maybe even playing an arrangement, right? We're getting into kind of the more soloistic level of playing tunes, if I could play, you know. That's a really cool level to be at, to be able to synthesize this tune together from an arrangement that you've learned or that you create on your own or improvise. Level four is all about improvisation too. Can I play through these changes? I do this a lot. Or am 
might just be straight eighth notes. So there's lots of ways to practice that, but I'm still kind of practicing the tune, right? It's, it's a stage to practice improv. So that's kind of how jazzers think. It's a great level to be at and you do have to maintain it. It's easy to fall off back into level three, but level four kind of understands how to have this sustainable thing that you can kind of count on more than level three that might be a little bit in the dark on some things. This is the level you can get to at any time. Uh, level one through four, you can just zip right to it. This is where we just uh, turn into the instrument, basically. We just serve the song. You can do this with two chords. A whole orchestra could do this with a symphony. Anybody can do it, but you it takes kind of a, a willingness and an openness that actually I think is really challenging for a lot of people. It was for me for a long time. I would be in my head about stuff and just not totally available to whatever this song needed in a performance or you know when I was recording or, or whatever, just playing in general. I encourage you, like with Moon River, it would be like me playing this. So automatically it feels like I'm the first listener. So, so automatically that I can just play through this tune that it feels like I'm just watching it happen. I know it so deeply that there's no uh, mental chatter going on. What's the next chord? What's the next chord? Stuff like that, right? Not helpful to play music. I realized this a long time ago. Well, not too long ago in my life. But uh, since I've realized it, it's just been uh, such a breath of fresh air to realize how can I get really honest with my progress as I'm learning and not get uh, just discouraged and, you know, we know how it can go, right? But you remove this barrier of performance and you just sink into whatever, however you play it, however it's going to come out and you accept that. It's a beautiful place to be and uh, I have not yet been able to stay at level five, but I've tasted it a few times and it keeps me always searching for a, a better path and a better way of playing that's more authentic. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you read the newsletter that accompanies this. I go into much more detail. I'll be back breaking down every level in a more detailed way, one at a time. And if this has been helpful, you can like and subscribe and I'll be back next week putting videos out on Fridays now. So until then, uh, happy practicing.